Cleveland Cavaliers did it. They defeated the 73-win Golden State Warriors. And they did it on the back of LeBron James making plays, driving inside, and being impossible to defend for Golden State. On the other side, they stopped both Steph Curry and Klay Thompson from getting in their rhythm, and it was a full team effort. Of course, we can't forget the contributions that Kyrie Irving gave to the team, and Kevin Love had some great moments as well. And so, I thought to myself, if the Cavaliers have beaten the 73-9 Warriors, how would they fare against the 72-10 Chicago Bulls? a team that actually won the championship. Now, of course, Michael Jordan is the head of the Chicago Bulls team, greatest player of all time. Anything that he wants to do on the floor, it's possible, and there's a chance that he could take over this game himself. Of course, there's also Scottie Pippen, who the Cavaliers are gonna have to take account of as well. But what really makes the Bulls so scary is their defense, because of course, Pippen and Jordan as on-ball defenders, but we can't forget Dennis Rodman as well, able to move around the floor so well, and also grab pretty much any rebound that comes up. Speaking of rebounds, it's going to be interesting to see how Tristan Thompson competes against Dennis Rodman. And then of course, LeBron James. Can he go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Michael Jordan and actually lead the Cavaliers to a victory? How is Kyrie Irving going to play when he could potentially be defended by Scottie Pippen? And are the Bulls going to be able to defend a pick-and-pop player like Kevin Love, someone who was not very prevalent when they actually played? And by the way, if anything weird happens, don't get mad at me. This is completely simulation. It's CPU versus CPU, all right? I'm not controlling either team here. And so we're going to have this in Chicago out of respect for the Bulls. They had the better record. Potentially the greatest team of all time. Can the Cavaliers actually do it? Can they pull off the upset against these guys? Well, very early on, Kyrie Irving with the ball. I wanted to see how could the Bulls defend Kevin Love they didn't know what the hell they was doing on this one. Dennis Rodman was a step slow. Now, I understand he's not as quick as he once was on the Pistons, but he's got to be playing better defense than that. Speaking of defense, J.R. Smith was not playing it at all there. MJ just threw that down. He's already looking confident. Kyrie Irving got Ron Harper up in the air, finished over Dennis Rodman. Kyrie's finishing at the rim, man. So impressive. And now as Chicago's trying to set their defense, Dennis Rodman left a little too much space to LeBron James, and he gets on the board. Rodman is not showing up defensively as of right now. That's the first disappointment for the Bulls. But if you thought that the Cavs were going to pull out to a lead this early, well, they gave MJ a little bit of space, and he was a pretty legit three-point shooter at this point in his career. But if you think the Bulls are going to start to build a lead, let me just introduce you to Amon Shumpert going God mode because he's got that layup, and then Steve Kerr trying some around-the-back BS. I don't know what was up with that. Shumpert there. Cavaliers have a lead after the first. That's inexcusable on Steve Kerr's part, especially because he's only a shooter. What are you doing, man? Now, Kyrie got Ron Harper earlier in the game, so I think Harper's trying to get him back on this one. He's actually successful, able to drive inside. Harper was quite a scorer before he came over to Chicago, but now he has to play some defense on LeBron. We haven't seen a game-changing play by LeBron James just yet. Well, that might change. He blows by and he just dunks the hell out of Luke Longley. One thing about the Bulls, their big men, besides Rodman, were never that intimidating. I mean, you got Longley, Bill Cartwright, so Chicago has to come right back. Let's see that signature turnaround by MJ. Ooh, that's beautiful. No chance of defending that one. They're probably going to have to bring a double team at some point to defend that. What's Scottie Pippen going to do at the top of the key? He finds Luke Longley open. Did anybody really expect him to make that jumper? I mean, MJ gave Longley crap all the time because he couldn't hit a 15-footer. Or maybe it was Stacy King, I don't know. The Bulls' big men are interchangeable, really. Kyrie left open. Cavaliers are hanging around. If you thought this was just going to be a blowout by the Chicago Bulls, oh no, the Cavaliers actually have a four-point lead going into the half, unless Delavadova hits this. Okay, he doesn't. Four points. I'm still looking for Scottie Pippen. Can he do something at the moment? I mean, the Cavs are shooting 57%. Scottie's supposed to be a great defensive player, although Rodman's messed up as well. Speaking of Pippen... He hits a hell of a fadeaway over LeBron James. Not really Scotty's wheelhouse shots like that. LeBron James left open, and luckily for them, his jumper ain't working. Depending if LeBron's shot is going in or not like that, he, he's basically impossible to defend. And then Michael Jordan, he kind of bailed Kevin Love out there with a turnaround, but, you know, it still went in because, of course, MJ can hit whatever shot you present to him. But look at this. Kevin Love left open. I was wondering... Are the Bulls going to know how to defend a stretch four? Because that wasn't really a thing in the 90s. 
They might just be leaving Kevin Love open because they're not used to defending power forwards at the three-point line. Can Shumpert defend Michael Jordan? I mean, can anybody really? He just kind of slithers by him, the floater. This is a back-and-forth game at this point. But then, speaking of Kevin Love, once again, just left wide open. They're going to need to make some adjustments on that, okay? This isn't the era of all power forwards just being around the rim. I mean, Cavaliers up four into the fourth quarter. There's only three minutes left. They got to go on a run right now. Well, if you notice MJ and LeBron on the right-hand side, MJ is making his move to the rim. That's off, but... The greatest of all time, he's not going to give up that easy. He gets the offensive rebound, he's going to the line. Now, he already made the first one, but in a situation like this, you really need two, so I'm a little disappointed that MJ couldn't make that one. Then the Kevin Love pick and roll once again. They leave him open, but Kyrie wanted to shoot it. MJ was playing some quality defense there. You got to imagine that Michael Jordan's going to be the one with the ball in his hands at this point. Let's see if the Cavaliers can actually adjust to it. And they're getting it to MJ right here. And then the double team comes, and what the hell was that? He just hit some dude in the front row. Michael, what's going on, man? This is not the MJ that I expected to see in this fourth quarter. And now LeBron on the post up with Michael, and he just blew right by him. Look at this. Could the Cavaliers actually pull off this upset? I mean, LeBron's getting the better of MJ as of right now. This is surprising as hell, you gotta admit. This is a five-point game. The Cavaliers could pull away, the Bulls gotta make something happen. Well, they kinda double-team MJ, leaving Pippen wide open. It's only three points. But we're still waiting on Michael Jordan. We're waiting for that one signature MJ play. Well, this might help as LeBron tries some fancy pass. Thompson can't finish. And here comes MJ up the floor. And it's only Kyrie Irving. Can Kyrie actually defend Michael Jordan? Well, Kevin Love comes over for the double, Rodman's open, it's only one point now. This is exactly what we wanted, we wanted a close, tight-knit game, but then look at this, Rodman falls down, Kevin Love, he's got the lane all to himself, the hoop, and the foul. Oh my goodness, I think Bulls fans are having a heart attack at this point. Could the Chicago Bulls actually lose this game against the Cleveland Cavaliers? I mean, the Cavs, they went up a level and then some against the Golden State Warriors. They might be doing the same thing against the Chicago Bulls. Kevin Love hits that, it's four points. The Bulls need to make something happen right now, and Ron Harper, would you please stop dribbling and just give the ball to MJ, you're gonna scare everybody. Okay, there you go, get it to Michael Jordan, and it just rims out. What the hell is going on, MJ? Don't tell me LeBron James is actually gonna win this matchup. Well, LeBron can't make that one either. I feel like he could have just barreled his way inside, but he wanted to do a pull-up jumper for some reason. Now this is a prime MJ post-up situation, oh my goodness. That was a bad pass, some miscommunication on the Bulls part. This is not a good look, man. Cavaliers have a 6 point lead with 50 seconds left. I was expecting the Chicago Bulls to be the controllers of this game. The Cavaliers, they're looking confident, they could pull off the upset. If I can get really corny, they could shock the world. But let's see if MJ has one more play in him. It's him and LeBron James. He's making his move and what the hell? LeBron James just stripped him down the way. Oh my goodness. LeBron James just gave every single Chicago Bulls fan a heart attack. He stripped Michael Jordan. He threw it down. The Bulls have to do something crazy right now if they want to win this game. Scottie Pippen, who really hasn't shown up in this one, if we can be honest, he hits that fadeaway. But now at this point, the Cavaliers just have to hit some free throws and this game is over. And Kyrie Irving is one of the best in the league when it comes to this. And if we notice the Bulls, they actually have their second unit in the game. I think they're throwing in the white towel. Now granted, some of that's because 2K just has weird default settings. But Steve Kerr trying to be the hero? I'll be damned. The Cleveland Cavaliers, they defeated the Golden State Warriors. And now they just defeated the 72-10 Chicago Bulls. Again, don't get mad at me. Get mad at 2K if you don't like this outcome. Kyrie Irving, the player of the game. Do we really expect Kyrie Irving to be the best player on the floor with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and LeBron James? I'll be damned, but it happened.